How can we creatively do great work? That's what we're going to talk about today. Next time you're stuck, think of your work as a collage. Steal two or more ideas from your favorite artist and start juxtaposing them. Voila! Austin Kleon, Steal Like an Artist. Today we're going to continue our conversation about the book Steal Like an Artist, 10 Things Nobody Told You About Being Creative by Austin Kleon. I said last week I like this book and I really do. I had heard forever how great this book was and how many people were really inspired by this book. And then when I saw the style of writing, it's very easy to read. I thought, well, I don't know, maybe there's really no good idea here. But instead, I found it really inspirational. I found it something that helped me, I guess, connect to what I had been doing and collecting a file of things that inspired me, of people who inspired me. Basically took my whole way I had been living my life and brought it in to this is okay. This is how you become great. And I'm hopeful now that maybe someday I can become great. So we're going to continue talking about this book. He says, you have to realize that when you steal little pieces here and there, you shouldn't worry about it too much because the thing that's going to unify the whole thing is you. You're the one who made it. And so you're the one who makes it unified. I think even in my whole array of podcasts, what do they have in common? Well, there's this one about productivity. Then there's two that talk about the Bible and then one that talks about nature. And then I have a blog that talks about living the better life, of having a better life. What about all of that unifies it? Me and my friend Em, we are the unifiers. Things that we like, things that inspire us, and things that we would love to share with you to make your life better. Aha, that's what makes unity important. He also says it's important to have hobbies so that we don't just get famous of it, that it, it helps our creativity. It helps us become restored. And even if it's like a couple of hours where you're just having fun with your friends or you're making something, every once in a while, my friend and Em and I will watch a class on some sort of streaming service and go along with the class, whatever it is. We have done it for watercolors. We've done it for bird watching. So we just take a class somewhere and try to learn something new. And it is invigorating. It is relaxing in that sense that I have figured something new out. So then his a sixth idea about the secret of good work is to share with other people and figure out, he says, what you love. And if that thing loves you back, he says, then you're lucky because you have found something that is great for you. It's great for the thing, whatever it is. And now you're going to make great work about it. It's going to make you enjoy what it is you're doing. You're going to get stuck experimenting and trying things out and making that thing better. And he says what's nice about it when it's a hobby is if you don't have investors and it's not part of your work and it's not part of what you normally do, you can do whatever it is you care to do. And then he says, enjoy your obscurity while it lasts. Use it. Now, maybe part of it is like podcasting in a sense. When I started doing this podcast, I had 13 people downloading the podcast, you know, and, and it was very good because I was learning how to do it. I was getting used to doing it. I was getting used to talking about how I wanted to do this podcast. And by the time I think I finally started figuring it out, I got more and more listeners. And so I got better and better. And so the obscurity helped me get a little bit of room so I could get good at it or at least get better at what I'm doing. And I think he's right about that. He says that it's really hard, you know, as part of the formula to do good work. That's hard all by itself. There's no, he says, no shortcuts that you will make things every day and some of it's going to stink and some of it's going to be great. And some places you're just going to utterly fail. When you fail at something, you're going to learn something. And then he says, the next part is share with other people. That part is easy to do. You just put stuff on the internet or this podcast. My friend Allison helped me hit the publish button on it, meaning now it's shared. People are going to hear this thing. At one point I asked her, I said, should I go back and redo my first podcast where I wasn't so good? She's like, don't you dare. Keep going. Move on. Get better. Once you do that sharing part, 
then he said, well, people ask him, what's the question of doing things on the internet? How do you share things with people? And the funny thing of it is, I think the step is of sharing with other people is just do it. Just share it with people. Just get it out there. Hit the publish button. Hit the podcast button. Do the thing. If you wait for it to be perfect or if you wait till you're perfect or you wait for it, you'll never get there. By putting things out there and in front of people, you will get better at it. If you just think you're going to make secret podcasts for a couple of years until you're great at it and then get out there and go podcasting, it just doesn't work that way. Or I'm going to secretly write and never publish my book. And then in 10 years when I'm good at writing, I'll publish my book. It doesn't work that way either. He says you have to invite people in. He has learned. He said so much from other people. He has learned how to be better at this. He has gotten advice from people. He's gotten feedback from people. But he's also met people who are like him and been able to steal from them and share ideas. And so if you just put yourself out there, put yourself online, again, no, it's never been easier to share yourself with the world. Now, this can be a place where you can start finishing and incubating ideas. Love that. And it's hard. He gives this very funny graph about how you start out with a project and you're on this high. Oh, this is great. Oh, no, this is hard. Oh, no, this is going to take a lot of work. You know, and then you just start stinking at it. You're bored with it. And then you start learning, hey, maybe if I just finish this, I'll learn something better the next time. And then you find out later it's not as bad as what you thought. He stole that from one of his friends. So again, you will get better once you get ideas out there. And the great thing, and I agree with him completely, that when it comes to the internet, if you were an artist, you had to share your art somewhere. It had to hang on some wall somewhere. And then 10 people got to see it. Or if you wrote a book or you wrote oh, like a very interesting op-ed opinion piece, or maybe you'd put it in your local paper and 100 people would read it. Now it's so easy to get your ideas out there and get people churning on your ideas, thinking about your ideas, giving you feedback on them. And maybe it might feel uncomfortable to hear feedback. And maybe you're going to feel nervous to get feedback. But as soon as you do, you will look at everything in a brand new way. And your brain is going to work harder, he says. Once you know, he says, in the end, be nice. The world is a small town and make friends. He says, the only reason I'm here is to make friends. And that's such a great outlook because if you're in this world to just crush people or to make a fortune, Maybe you're going down the wrong path. I know a lot of people get into content marketing to become rich, to start an independent business. Maybe they don't want to work in the regular nine to five job kind of scenario. Instead, if you go into this wanting to make friends, your ideas out there, learn something more, it makes life so much richer. And he says, quote, if you ever find that you're the most talented person in the room, you need to find another room. My dad always said, to me. At one point, I got better at chess than he was. He's the one who taught me how to play chess. We played all the time, and eventually I could pretty fairly reliably beat him. And he was pretty good. And then he stopped playing with me, and I said, well, why don't we play chess anymore? And he says, because you're better than I am. You always need to play chess with someone better than you. That's how you get better. Oh, understood the point that every time you need to go up against work with, compete with someone better than you are. And that's where he says we're going to bring our curiosity, kindness, our stamina, and I love this, a willingness to look stupid. You know, putting yourself out there on a podcast means you're going to flub up words. You're going to say things incorrectly. You're going to sometimes say the wrong thing or something that just isn't right because you're learning and you're going to get better at this and you're just going to have to get over that. It is an absolute willingness to look stupid that is going to make you advance. It's going to get you out there and it's going to make you better. You know, people will say, you know, when they listen to your podcast, well, why did you do it like that? Or why did you say this? Or do you know you do this or you do that? And it's great when people point out things because then that can make you better. But at some point, too, they have to realize you are growing as well. You are going someplace. You're not just saying I'm perfect as it is. I am podcasting right now like this. And in two years, I'm going to be better at podcasting. I'm going to be more intriguing about podcasting. And I think that's where we have to realize that 
advice is great, but you're going to get better at it. This was interesting too. He says to keep a praise file. And my friend had this file um, when she was working at this company and she called it her BLT file. And anytime someone said a nice thing to her, gave her a compliment, she put that email, printed it out and put it in what she called her BLT file. And anytime she fell down on the day, she felt like it wasn't great. Her day wasn't going very well. Too many people said unkind words to her. She could pull out her BLT file and feel better about it. Also works really well when you have performance reviews. If you have a BLT file, you can always pull out all the nice things people said about you in the last year and put that on your self-review. But it's such a great idea. Here was the really other interesting idea that he talked about, which was, he said, keeping your day job. And you always wonder that, right? I have a podcast. It's not my intention to quit my job. It really isn't. Would I love to be able to make enough money so the podcast didn't cost me money? Absolutely. But I like my day job. And the nice thing about the day job is it keeps this from being high pressure. If I depended on making money with this podcast, suddenly I would be throwing you all into marketing funnels. I would try to get you on my mailing list. I would be doing all sorts of things that I probably should be doing, but I don't really want to do it that way. And instead, by keeping my day job, it puts me in contact with the rest of people in my office. I get to talk to other people, but it also means I get other ideas when I think about something I have a struggle with during my job. I can do a podcast about it. I could read a book about it and see if I can't fix whatever is going on in my own life. And because the job isn't related to this podcast, I can make this podcast about anything I want it to be. I can decide I'm going to cut it in half, or I could decide to double it, or I could decide I'm going to start talking about something else entirely. This is a podcast that is for you and me. I'm not feeling pressured to do anything because my day job allows me to do this without having to worry about it. His last point, number 10, is talking about creativity. And he says, creativity is subtraction. Choose what to leave out. We did that whole podcast on essentialism and how when you cut things out, it makes the things that remain even better. And that's going to be true on any creative process you do. So much gets packed in to some things that you walk away with no opinion out of it. It's too busy. It's too many words. It's too much reading. It's now too fluffy that you can't get the point out. I try really hard, and I maybe will do a better job of this, of making sure these podcasts stay around 17 minutes. But I think that's what he's talking about. I will get my main points out better if I say less than if I say more. We did this podcast on episode number three, Ruthlessly Eliminating Noise. That was on September 28th, 2020, where we talked about some quotes from Warren Buffett and the book Essentialism, but it's about cutting things out and how to figure out what to cut out. You have to make sure you know how to prune and how to trim what you're going to say down so that it's in a reasonable bite-sized chunk. At the very end of the book, he gives a checklist of all the ideas he just gave and a list of books he loves to read. You know what? We have not covered a single one of these books, so it's good to know there's a whole list of new books out there we could talk about. He even put at the very, very end of the book ideas he had for this book that he decided to leave out. Again, he's going to do his own pruning, his own limiting of what he says to make sure this book has impact. And what I like too is he talked about at the very end that I think this was the 10th anniversary copy of his book. And he talks about what has changed with him, that all this time went by and he can't believe that all those years ago he wrote this book. A 19-year-old version of him wrote this book. He said at the very end, who wrote this? I think to myself, who is this kid? Where did he get this energy and this confidence? He stole it, obviously. And now we get to steal from him. I recommend this book. I I think it is just one of those things that's going to inspire you when you're having a drought, when you don't know which way to turn, or you don't know how to kick your creativity up to a place where you can do something with it. This book is the way to go. So my challenge to you is to start a praise file. 
start someplace, whether it's digital or it's on paper, that you can keep all the good things that happen. Whether it's an email someone sent you, that's really nice. Or maybe it's a podcast review about your podcast and someone said something so kind to you, you would just love to have it in one spot. Then start accumulating some of those good things so that you have that praise file that you can rely on anytime you're having a bad day or anytime you're having a performance review. You choose. Hardy One, thanks so much. I appreciate listening to the podcast. Please remember to leave a review if you wouldn't mind. It helps the podcast get more listeners and get out there more. I appreciate everything you do and the fact that you listen to this podcast still. And I just appreciate all of you so much. And remember, your walk to getting out there and sharing your creativity starts with small steps.